lo and behold, even recently, this is a recent statistic that hundreds of thousands of Canadians are getting turned down for a mortgage. So not everyone can qualify for a mortgage. You need to have at least 5%, you need to have a credit of 680 or better, you need to have capacity, you need to have character. There's a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of pieces have to fit together for the lenders to want to give you money. So there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the mechanics of credit. I wasn't taught about it in school. I didn't learn about it in university. So who does rent to own make sense for? Well, we are now dealing with a new economy. We have a lot of people that are starting new jobs after university or maybe um, they're new to the country. There's a whole bunch of reasons why people are starting a new job, maybe career shifts. Uh, maybe they were off on maternity leave for years and they're getting back into the workforce. New job is new job. And if you do not have um, a history in a job or in a career, well, guess what? Your credit is not going to be where the lenders need it to be. If you are carrying student loans, oh my goodness, it took me a long time to pay off my OSAP, and now they're looking at diminishing OSAP, so what's gonna happen to the students of the future? People who are graduating university, people who are graduating uh, college, they're stuck with debt, and that debt is holding them back from qualifying under the GDS and TDS levels that the banks need you to be at. And then of course you have the newcomers to Canada. There's a huge wave of Canadians, or new, uh, new Canadians, who uh, came into this country and that wave will continue. They are not able to get in with 5% down and they need some time to get to 680 or better on their credit. And that's where rent own comes in. So what you're gonna get out of tonight is one very important thing. If that's you struggling with your credit, don't take no for an answer. So over time, we've built up a network, a community, a families, just like my husband and I, with kids, with properties, who wanna help other people get into home ownership. So we're basically private families helping families get on the property ladder. We're over 300 families across Ontario who used our rent-own process to get into home ownership, but not just get into home ownership, they got into home ownership and fast tracked their savings and their finances. That is the power. So it's not just about stopping renting and getting into rent to own. It's about fast tracking your financial wealth and your financial well-being and ultimately your future. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So there's really four main benefits to rent to own. Rent to own gives you the time you need to build up your credit. Credit takes time, no matter how you slice it, whether it's a new job, recovery from a consumer proposal, or just recuperating from that Rogers bill that you've been arguing for years. It's gonna take time. Rentown gives you that time. And some people need two years, some people need three years, and some people need a longer runway, four years. We will not keep you in a rent own process longer than necessary. We want you in ownership. So it'll be minimum two, most likely three, and then in certain circumstances, four years. And in those four years, essentially, you have a lot of runway to figure out what the credit is and how to fix it. And we're in the background guiding you. So you're not alone, because figuring out the whole credit puzzle is really tricky. But when you're held accountable, when you have a team guiding you, us behind the scenes, oh my goodness, magic happens. The other thing that a lot of people do in the rent home process is they add value to their property. And that translates into building equity, and equity spells profit in your pocket. Because if you make improvements right now to your rental, say you, I don't know, change out the carpet and put in nicer flooring because you're allergic and your landlord didn't want to accommodate you. Who gets the benefit of the upgrade? The landlord. The landlord. You're a landlord, that's why you say you do. <laughs> but if you're a renter, you are not getting the benefit. In a rent-to-own, if you add value to the property during the rent-to-own process, you are building your equity. So here you are a renter in a rent-to-own program and there's equity piling up. So the more improvements you make, the better. You could do landscaping. Did you know that landscaping adds anywhere from two to 3% value to your property? Curb appeal. Landlords know a lot about that. But as owners, you need to understand that. So if you do some landscaping, basic gardening, just curb appeal. You could boost the value of that property and at the end of that rent own process, you get money in your pocket. That's how important this piece is. Um, the other consideration is that you are building up a bigger down payment. So not everybody has 15%, 20% because if you have poor credit, the lenders want you to have 10, 15, 20% Private lenders obviously will not accept a 5% down payment because you're seen as a credit risk. So there's a whole bunch of considerations. In a rent own, 5% is just dandy. So if you have only 5%, today in a rent own, 
it's enough. But when you exit the rent to own process, two years out, three years out, the rules are gonna change. We know that the mortgage rules are gonna get tighter and stricter. So we want you to build up a bigger down payment through the rent to own process. So every monthly payment you're making, guess what? Cha-ching, you're adding to your initial down payment. So your 5% will double through the rent to own process. And last but not least, why do people rent to own and why do they benefit from it? Because it gives them a sense of stability. No longer will you have a situation where the landlord comes and raises the rent or asks you to move out because he's renovating. That's a new trend and I'll explain why. You have security stability that you're locked into one monthly payment. You can budget for that monthly payment for three years and you know at the end of that, you're gonna be exiting into ownership of that property. And to the rest of the world, optically speaking, it's your property, you are the owner. Nobody needs to know that it's a rent to own behind the scenes. So that's the cool part. So it gives you a sense of, ah, I'm home. <laughs> so stability is probably the number one reason why people benefit from rent to own. So now let's talk about the three reasons why you wanna to rent to own now. Let's not talk about this is something that you can do in the future. There's a reason you wanna do this now because things are moving in this market really fast and we've talked about getting priced out of the market so you gotta hop onto that ladder. Why? Because as rents go up, people's ability to build up a savings on the side is going down. And the reality is right now statistics show that the average rent for a two bedroom condo in Toronto is $2,800. So the average person is probably going to be compromised on how much money each month they're going to be able to enjoy and live freely and then of course set aside money for holidays, you know, shoe sales, hair, nails, you know, all of that stuff adds up. So you're gonna to wanna to still enjoy your life, but if you're paying more in rent, your savings are gonna com get compromised. Let's think about it. If you're paying $28.50 a month on rent, over three years, that adds up to $103,000. Have you ever stopped to take a quick calculation of however many years you've been renting, how much have you rented, and really how much money have you put out there to the landlords? Well, here's an opportunity to put a stop to all of that. All right, let's look at other statistics. So there was a City, City News uh, report that said rent in Toronto is going to actually go up. If you thought it was high, it's gonna go up by another 11%. Why? Why is this happening? Well, a few things. So the smart landlords out there, they want to convert a lot of their rentals into luxury units so they can charge more rent. So they're asking the existing renters to leave and they're going to renovate and of course they're going to charge more money and if you cannot afford the more money that they're going to be charging you're going to be out of an apartment and then you're going to have to absorb all of the market rents and they're calling this renoviction this is an actual term that the researchers have coined so keep an eye out for this because this is going to become more and more prevalent not of course with you as a landlord right you're a good landlord number two house prices are going to continue to go up why because affordability is dropping you don't have as many affordable opportunities so more people are vying for the few affordable properties that are on the market and the more people that are going after the smaller price properties what is it doing supply and demand so as even the affordable properties have lots of people vying for them, it's still raising the price points. And then of course we've got the other consideration. The Ontario market attracts a whole load of immigrants. There's job opportunities here. So they're all settling here. And when somebody's moving to a new country, what's the first thing that they want to do? They want to own. So more buyers are coming into the market. They're coming here with money most of them, great employment opportunities. What is that gonna to do to the market prices? It's gonna drive up the demand. So that's going to obviously compromise affordability going forward. So that's a really important consideration. It's a condo selling for $500,000. To be able to afford this type of a condo, you would need to have an income of about $120,000 household income. But that's the reality. For a $500,000 property, you need as much as about $120,000 to get in if your down payment is closer to the 5% mark. So moral of the story is don't rent, don't waste any time because you're losing money. And I'm gonna show you an example of how this actually affected a couple um, named Danny and Nadia. 
So Nadia finished her nursing degree and she was carrying a little bit of debt from, from her student years. And Danny recently came to Canada. So he doesn't have a lot of established credit. He didn't really go for credit cards. He comes from an Eastern European country where they don't really believe in paying with credit cards. Cash is king. So he had a lot of that mentality. So he did not bother to establish any credit. And lo and behold, Nadia and Danny want to get married, they want to settle down, they go to apply for a mortgage because they found a lovely two-bedroom condo downtown and they get turned down. So Danny and Nadia decided that, you know what, if we can't buy today because we don't have all the credit situation handled, we're going to rent to own. And this is how it would work out for them. So this is a two-bedroom condo, two-bathroom, nice view balcony there's a gym in the building it's a beautiful beautiful property but in 2016 the kitchen wasn't updated so in 2016 it's sold for a little bit less this is the updated photo that you're seeing here and because they took the time to add value to that kitchen it did something super amazing to their pocketbook now let's take a look. So to rent to own, you still need to qualify, but the criteria is a little bit looser and more forgiving when it comes to certain things that the banks are looking for. So the first thing that we'd be looking for is annual household income. In this case, in order for them to afford that condo, they would have needed an annual household income of 85,000. Now, because Danny didn't have established credit, he was basically at 550 because he didn't pay bills on time or argued with Rogers. It was because he just didn't own credit cards and he needed the time and the, I guess, the know-how to figure out how all of this works. So credit score was about 550, which is quite low. A bank will not touch you, a private lender will not touch you, and there's a whole bunch of other considerations when your credit is that low. And down payment, well, they had only $15,000 saved up. For the banks, that wouldn't be enough because the credit was too low. The banks would want a much higher down payment when your credit is low. But in a rent-to-own arrangement, this criteria is A-OK. -okay. So here's what they did. So they rented to own for a three-year term. 36 months is all it took. In a rent-to-own, you are making one monthly payment, but it consists of two things. The first is your rent. So the landlord that owns that property, we'll call them landlords, but they're technically a private investor, the person that owns that property that you pick to rent to own has to cover their carrying costs. And those carrying costs are ultimately your rent. So in this case, it was $18.50. Fair? Would you say that's a fair rent for a two bedroom condo in 2016? Now, the other part of the monthly payment is a down payment credit. So through the rent to own payments, what we're doing is we're building up Nadia's and Danny's down payment overall, they are coming in with 15,000, but 15,000 three years out is probably not going to be enough. So we need them to have more saved up. So every month, in addition to their rent, they are paying a down payment credit. And in this case it's $555 each month. So that collectively their monthly payment is going to be 2405. And because it's a condo that they chose, there are condo fees on top of that. And their income supports this because we ran all the numbers to make sure that the affordability was there. And because they weren't carrying any debt, there was a lot more wiggle room for us to accommodate this price point. The more debt you have, the lower your price point because you still have to manage your debt while you're in a rent to own scenario. So it's a very responsible strategic process to get to this affordability quotient. So 2405 is what they're paying. So it's not just rent, so they're actually putting money back in their pocket every month, over $500 going back into their pocket. So let's now talk about the other place where there is leverage for a couple like this. In 2016, this property was selling on the market, and there are listings to prove this, by the way. I'm not making up these numbers. In 2016, this property was listed for $349,000. That's when Danny and Nadia got into the rent-to-own process. Fast forward, this property in 2019 is now worth $523,000. So it's about a 14, 15% annualized increase. But Nadia and Danny are not paying $523,000 at the end of the rent to own process. Nadia and Danny were locked in at the beginning of the rent to own to buy this condo for $429,990. Are they buying below market value? Are they getting a deal? I need to hear more yeses than that. Yes, they are getting a steal. But guess what this steal really translates into? 
$93,000 in equity. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. All they had to do was make their monthly payments on time. And because Nadia and Danny decided that they're going to upgrade the kitchen, seven or $8,000 worth of money because it's not a big kitchen. They just made some slight cosmetic improvements. It boosted the value and that value stayed with them at the end of the rent-to-own process. So they came in with 15,000, technically they invested only $15,000 in their rent-to-own scenario. And let's see how they made out. So between 2016 and 2019, they built up a down payment. So remember, they had 15,000 in each month, $555 times 36 months, combined with that 15,000, adds up to $35,000, more than double with what they came in with. All they did was pay on time every month. And then of course, they've got the equity, the $93,000 worth of equity. You add that together, cha-ching, these guys are ahead by $128,000. Are they making money? Absolutely. And on top of that, they basically live for free. Because if you do the math, they're ahead by $128,000, but because they were still technically paying $1,850 a month over 36 months rent, that would have cost them about $67,000. So they're still further ahead than if they just stayed renting because the rent gets canceled out by what they're ahead by. That's how powerful rent to owns are. So whatever your budget really dictates is where you can go. Now, some of you are probably thinking, huh, how legitimate is this, Rachel? Legit. The CMHC approves this approach as long as everything is documented in your contracts up front. So there are other rent to own companies out there but not everybody does it properly. You need to educate yourself. And that's why our book is such a valuable resource for you. It talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly, because there are ugly arrangements out there. The reality is there's ugly scenarios in every industry. So you need to educate yourself before you jump into anything. But my point is CMHC, the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, which ultimately uh, is involved in processing your mortgage application at the end because you're coming in with probably about 10% down payment. So you're still going to need an insured mortgage. The CMHC uh, is going to ask, what is your source of down payment? And all you have to say is, here are my contracts, here are my rent own contracts, and there's a paper trail that we keep on file to validate that it was a legitimate arrangement and CMHC just coasts you on through. Not all rent owns work that way, ours does, and it's a really important consideration. All right, so, if you're sitting there thinking, I need some help putting together all of the pieces that the lenders are looking for, and there are a lot of pieces, and they're complicated and not a lot of people understand them, which justifies why I do what I do. My name is Rachel Oliver. I'm considered one of Ontario's top rent-to-own experts. <laughs>